Welcome back. Do you remember the website Is Anyone Up? In 2010, it was one of the most notorious places on the internet. It terrified and horrified people, mostly young women, who found their most personal photos on the website. It was a revenge porn site. Men would upload sexually explicit photos of their exes to humiliate them. Well, there's a new Netflix, Netflix docu-series about the website called The Most Hated Man on the Internet. It's just out. Here's a clip. I woke up. You know, you, you wake up, you look at your phone, 200 notifications. There I was, topless, multiple photos. It was an absolute shock. I got posted on the site. Isanyoneup.com. I felt violated. Humiliation. That site was about destroying lives. We would create a website like this. The site's founder, Hunter Moore, also paid a hacker to steal private photos from people's emails, but for more than a year, it seemed like there was nothing the women could do about it because the site was protected by the same laws that protect sites like Facebook. But then a mom got involved. Charlotte Law's daughter was one of Hunter Moore's victims, and she helped the FBI bring the site down. Uh, and Charlotte Laws joins me live now. Charlotte, full disclosure, like I'm obsessed with this docu-series and I'm obsessed with you and what you did. I mean, you you brought this guy down that was literally ruining women's lives all over the world. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's really quite amazing what he was doing and what he was getting away with. I mean, it was just a complete place for hatred, for bullying, for trolls, for humiliating and shaming and destroying people's lives, as you said. It was all about um, trying to get people fired, trying to drive them to suicide. It was not about pornography. It was not about nude pictures. And what Hunter Moore wanted was people, he wanted pictures of people who had something to lose, people who had a career. He didn't just want any old person who submitted their picture, no. It had to be people who he could really get, go after and get his followers to go after and torture and torment those yeah. people. And he, and he bragged about it. That's what was so sick. So tell me um, how your daughter got involved in all this. Like, how did her photos end up on this website? She had taken some pictures in her room with her cell phone, and one of them was topless. And her phone ran out of space, so she sent them to, to her email to save them. She never had any intention of showing the topless picture to anyone, and then she was hacked. And then a few days after she was hacked, her topless picture ended up on Hunter Moore's website, along with her name, her city, and her social media links. And she found out when she was at her waitress job, that's how she found out that it was on there, and she was just completely emotionally destroyed about it. And so then she calls you, her mom, and mm -hmm. um, what happens next? Like, how, how, I mean, I know it's a long story and you people can watch the docu-series, but, but what happens next? How do you, how'd you take this guy down? Yeah, I mean, I didn't even know what revenge porn was until that day. And I just realized I had to go into private eye mode. I used to be a private detective back in the 1980s, and I had to investigate him. I had to find out what the truth was, and I had to figure out a way to get her picture down. And then in the in the meantime, I started reaching out to other victims on the site. And I found out that 40% of the people I reached out to had been hacked. So I gave my data to the FBI. And luckily, they agreed to investigate, which was a very long investigation. It took over a year and actually two years before they were, you know, Hunter was arrested. So um, and nobody believed me. I mean, the victim blaming was rampant. People were saying, oh, I was a liar. I was just claiming my daughter was hacked, but she was really just a slut and sending her picture to everyone. And um, the media was glorifying Hunter Moore. He was this cool guy. He came up with this neat business model. Ooh, Hunter Moore, get him his picture and headlines everywhere. It was really an uphill battle. It was crazy. And I had death threats. I had uh, a stalker. Oh, my gosh. Uh, computer viruses. I was bombarded because he had this group of followers who were just very nasty people who were after me. So it was very scary. I mean, he messed with the wrong lady. There is no question um, about that. And people, I mean, you had to keep pushing, right? It's not like the FBI just took, took your information and said, great, we're going to take the site down. I mean, you pushed and pushed and pushed. Right. They just originally wanted me just to file a report online, which I knew meant that they were just 
too busy with other cases and weren't going to do anything. And um, I finally got them to agree to come to the house. And when they got there, they said, well, you know, we probably won't be able to take the case. But even if we do, it takes over a year for us to investigate. So there was a lot of like kind of bad news or really potentially bad news. But then they eventually did take the case. And I think it was partly because I had so many hacked victims and I was able to give them names and phone numbers and emails. And I knew that many of those people were hacked by the same individual. And this was someone that Hunter Moore had hired to hack into people's emails to get content for his website. Right, and that's what's so amazing, Charlotte, and people, again, if they watch the documentary, they will see that you organized all this behind the scenes, you, the mom, to take this guy down. And uh, whenever I get into a show like this, like I get on Google and just like obsess and want to find out everything. And what's so shocking is this man served two and a half years in prison, and, and he's out now. After all that, he's out. Right. It was kind of like arresting Jack the Ripper and giving him community service. That's essentially what it was. Right. He got a very light sentence. He thought it was bad. But, you know, he was he was in, like, alcohol, drug rehab centers. They were very light um, prison situations. But he did think it was the worst experience of his life, according to what he says now. And even though his mindset is the same, he's still a misogynist, he's never apologized, he blames everybody except himself. He blames the hacker. He blames his attorney. I'm sure he blames me. Um, he believes that tearing other people down somehow makes him the cool guy. He still has that mindset. But the only change that I've noticed based on what I've seen online is that he doesn't want to go to jail again. So I think he will try to stay away from criminal activity. That is my belief. Yeah, and he's not really remorseful at all. I mean, no, do you think he's going to no. do this again? I, I don't think he's going to do anything that's illegal again. And we are trying to get laws passed. We've got laws in 48 states. But what I'm really trying to push for is a federal law. We have something that was brought forth by one member of Congress. And we have, it's a bipartisan issue. But she her office told me about a month ago, there's only a 4% chance it's going to pass. But that's really important that we have a federal law so that all victims are protected and so that the law is the same from one state to, to another. And so it's consistent. So I think that's a big deterrent because based on what I know about these perpetrators, they are very afraid of law enforcement. They do not want to go to jail. It's usually like 20 guys in their 20s or 30s. They often live at home with their parents. They don't have any assets, so they don't care if you sue them civilly because they have nothing to right. lose. They just don't want to go to jail. So the laws really do provide well, a deterrent. What I found so disturbing, too, is that he's apparently considering writing a memoir and could make money all of, off of all of this and what he did, which is just sick. Real quick, we've only got 30 seconds left, Charlotte, but what's your advice to other women who go through, like, cyberbullying or revenge porn situations because they hit so many dead ends when they try to get help? What's your advice? Well, I would say that, that you know, we have a um, hotline. Uh, Cyber Civil Rights Initiative has a hotline, and so you can go there, and there's a lot of information at that website. And if you want an attorney, the Cyber Civil Rights Legal Project will help victims pro bono. So you can do a search in Google, find them, and it's a team of attorneys in lots of different states, and they will hopefully be able to help you. So that's kind of some advice for resources. You rock, Charlotte, and you're fearless, and, uh, and we thank you for coming on tonight. Everyone should check out the docu-series. Thank you so much. Is it okay to call me mom?